Oh, yes, we are freaking at the Freaker's Bow. I'm going to itch me where it scratches. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is the Freaker's Ball. It is Friday night once again, August 16, 2019. Uh, basically a full moon, Freakers. Not exactly a total full moon, but it's pretty darn close. That just happened on, uh, what, yesterday? Yeah, yesterday was a full moon. So we're still in full moon mode here for all you freaky freakers. <laughs> anyway, welcome to everybody out there listening to all of the various, from all the various places uh, you may be uh, listening to. Uh, of course, the main, the proper place is right here on RealLibertyMedia.com on the Freakers Ball Show page. Yep, 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 yep. So uh, if you're not on the Freakers Ball Show page, though, on reallibertymedia.com watching the video, you could be on the vaughn.live slash reallibertymedia uh, video, direct video page there. That's where it comes from. That's where it's sourced at. So uh, welcome to you all over there. But if you're on the audio stream, which you may well be, uh, either from reallibertymedia.com, rlmradio.xyz, possibly realliberty.org, freedomsnetwork.com, Tune in, Internet Radio, Shoutcast, and a host of others. Or if you just saw the link somewhere and you're listening on your own personal player there on your on your machines, on your computers or tablets, phones, whatever device you may have, and you saw the messages on Minds.com or Twitter, wherever, welcome. Welcome to y'all. Glad to have y'all here with us. And I look over here in the chat, and I notice that Mr. Prince says he's never been able to tune into a live show. Popping that cherry, yes, indeed. <laughs> so anyway, hi and howdy to all the folks here in the chat. This is a, the chat that you can access via reallibertymedia.com or rlmradio.xyz. Connects right on over here to irc.freenode.net, and uh, you can jump on in, pound, pound, uh, real uh, liberty media. Yep, 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 and you'll talk to all these great folks that are here today. These, uh, as uh, Flash somebody likes to say, the bots and the bodies. And there's the moose girl calling in. One, two, click, 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 click. There she is. <laughs> here I am. Hey, Miss Moose, how the heck you doing? I'm hanging in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, good. Hanging in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me, uh, I think I might need to readjust here. Oh, my. Yeah, every now and then I gotta, I gotta do that, so that's all right. Yeah. I, I gotcha, I gotcha. Anyway. Okay. So I'll just get ready to say hi and howdy to the folks in the chat. You want to go ahead and do that for me? No, you're good. You uh -huh. can do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, as I was saying, as a Flash likes to say, that bots and bots. Bodies. Uh, uh, we got the bar man, and we got Mr. Beetle, uh, Cowboy Jack A C T. We got myself and yourself, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Don Carroll D C. However you want to put him, I B Don C. He goes by many names. <laughs> we have Ant, Ant, and Asmo, and shouts to Miss Graham Z. Graham A. Oh, she did a funny show tonight. That was a great show. Um, uh, yeah, you know the uh, the Vaughn the Vaughn stream is um, touch and go. Yeah, see, you no, know, for me it does not work with Waterfox. Okay. I have to use Chrome or some other browser. All right. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't know what's going on, but all I know is because I monitor it on my on my Linux machine on Brave. I use Brave, and it works oh, great. Okay. It works great on there. Uh, uh huh. And and I, I I do get an occasional disruption, but it, it's very occasional. But for the most right. part, it's it's really good on there. No, so. I've noticed my water fox doesn't play. Yeah. Anyway. Cuts out all the time. Yeah. Hey, anyway, so uh, for people, and I've been looking for a new for a new video streaming service, but mm -hmm. as yet, I've I've not come across one that would be adequate. Uh, so uh, if anybody finds one out there and wants to let me know about it, I'll check it out. All right. Anyway, we got the Gramsci, we got Java Doctor, and Mister Meister Meister Brow the Woodman. We got Miss Kate, the wonderful Miss Kate. Mr. Rob Orks. Hey, Robert. How you doing down there? Uh, Mr. Aromes and Vanna White bot the Vin E. Vinster, Vincent Easley. Uh, the weather. Mr. Easley. Yes, yes. 
the weather dork uh, bot in Mr. Phantom, which is Mr. Phantom. Uh, Circle, <laughs> Circle, and I played a bunch of backgammon today on the uh, on the interwebs there. And, cool. Uh, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I haven't played backgammon in so long. It was like, how do I play this again? Oh yeah, I remember. Then take the if you if you if you yeah, you can remember pretty easily. Pretty easily. Did you hear that? Anyway, we got easily. <laughs> we got cyborg noodle and end uh, sieve. The frumpy one. Uh, it goes by other various variations of the frumpy name. Um, frumpy, frumpy. Yeah, all kinds of various. Frumpy two, frumpy three. <laughs> right. Yeah. Really creative there, frumpy. I know. Ain't it? Okay, there it works. The yay, Prince. You got it to work. All right. Awesome, dude. Right on. All right, we got the Grummet and Hagrid. Uh, which is Mike, SLC Mike there. Yeah. Uh, JJ's. Hey, JJ's. Haven't, heard, haven't talked to you for a while. Uh, we got... Yeah, you guys can try to be incognito, but we're going to out you. Yeah, yeah. We got... We're going to out you. We so, <laughs> you know, you're better out just sticking, like, with one or two nicknames, you know. Yeah, whatever. We got Kiss. Yeah. We got Mr. Snick. And we have the other half of Vinny, the Ponder Gander side. And yes. Mr. Prince, as we were talking about earlier, I, I do believe it's a Mister. I don't. I think it's a Mister. I, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, we got Pwns. Nowadays, on. you don't know. Not, no. uh, well, and, and because it could be any one of seventy-five different models. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we Gender got, variation. Yes, we got Pwn Sauce and Sock Puppet and Smart As. All of those here in the chat at this particular moment. In time. you're a dude. All right, dude. All right, he's a dude. Okay, All dude. All right, now we know. Good. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, well, you know, I wonder if there's a way to do a direct stream of the video rather than... Anyway, I, I don't know that. I'll, I'll have to look into that and see if there is. Um, that would be cool if it was. I, I, something I, it would I, I, be. I never even considered, but uh, VLC should be able to play network streams of things like Vaughn. I would think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, how the hell yes, you doing? I'm doing good. Hanging in there, you know? That's good. That's good to know. Made it through another week, so that's always good. Right on. Yeah, it's always good to... Um, you know. Oh. Um, <laughs> plugging away. <laughs> what else meme. can you do? There was, there was a meme I came across today on the minds.com. Uh-huh. And it's just text, you know, and it says... Right. Oh, shit. Here we go again. Oh, I mean, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Here I go again. Oh, I mean, good morning. <laughs> wow. I was like, yeah, I, I can relate. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know oh, that. man, I tell you. <laughs> so, um... Yeah. So, um, yeah. Do you know the Statue of Liberty? The, do I know it? You know of the, of the Statue of Liberty, right? Of course. Yes, everybody does. Like a beacon. It's supposed to be like a beacon for people, immigrants that came come to this country, right? Yeah, something like that. Back in the day, it was, a, it, it was you know, on Ellis Island or wherever the fuck it is, or right by Ellis Island. Yeah. And that's where every immigrant got processed. Well, right. Top immigration U.S. top immigration official has revised a quote that's inscribed on the Statue of Liberty. Okay. Hence, of a new policy that denies food aid to legal legal migrants. The head of Citizenship and Immigration Services tweaked the passage: "Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, your yearning to be free, breathe free." The official were added the words, who can stand on their own two feet and will not become a public charge. He later uh, said the poem had referred to people coming from Europe. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that means. White I mean, guys. You mean, this, he, mean, he means white guys. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna fucking change the goddamn sign on the goddamn Statue of Liberty, dude? Really? Oh, You're man. a dick. You're a dick, dude. Well, it probably came directly. Yeah. It probably, I mean, it probably came directly from Trumpy, right? Oh, probably. I, you know, it's like... Ugh. <laughs> ugh. Uh, it's, it's just like... It, it, what the hell? That, that, that's... that's uh, I, I would say not unexpected. 
<laughs> no, it's not surprising. It's not unexpected. I mean, oh man. But it's just what is what is the purpose of government? I I really think that right now the purpose of government is to destroy the goddamn fucking planet. Well, that's pretty much it. I, I, I yeah. I mean, you know, they act like they care and they're good, and this is part of their fucking tactic. Oh, we give a fuck about the planet. Yeah, but we're gonna fucking take away all these EPA protection, protections that we put on. We're gonna allow mining in the Boundary Waters Canoe area. We're gonna fucking. What are you guys doing? What are you fucking doing? Right. <laughs> I'm so like disgusted by the depth and and the arm length of government. We need to fucking do something. This. I don't know what, but something has to be fucking done. You know, let me look it up. I mean, I'll look it up on the break. But <laughs> okay. Trump is dismantling all these environmental protections that have been put on wilderness areas and shit. How is that a good thing for the people of this fucking well, country? Well, the, the thing is... Um, I I probably never would have agreed with those and protections being put in in the first place. However, he's not undoing them just as to undo them. He's undoing them uh, so that his uh, rich buddies can profit off of it. Exactly. It, it's, it's, it's a whole different thing than just saying, right? You know, oh, they're not getting none, none of this exactly. stuff. This stuff is so all going to be. So his mining buddies or whatever can come up there to the Boundary Waters Canoe area and start mining and destroy the fucking area. Right. Right. Basically. That's what they want to do is to be able to have permission to destroy certain areas that have been protected for a long time. You well, know, some, some of them I mean, for a long time. The, who the fuck do you think you are? You can come in and just fucking well, what? Uh, destroy uh, the goddamn country? The government, the government should have no say over that land in the first exactly. place. Exactly. They, they should have never been able to place those protections, and they should never be able to remove those protections. And they should right. never claim ownership of those areas. But you've got to do something like that, Grim. Otherwise, if you don't, if, if they never had protected it, it would be destroyed by now already. Oh, no, only because of yeah. the way, only because of the way the laws are made that, uh, that government grants to themselves those, the ownership of those lands. Right, uh, and then they, that's, a, and that's then, an issue too. Well, that is the issue. Uh, they, right. I mean, they they should have no say over that. And then they they then they grant their buddies uh, the usages of that land, and those buddies go in there and destroy it. Uh, right, which it they all make it a all goes ton of money, and the rest of us are like, what the fuck? It, it all it all goes back to the fact that government should never have existed. Right, uh, but that's, but that's the point. But, but people when, people are so indoctrinated. That they can't even imagine that. That they're so uh, right. fucking indoctrinated that they can't imagine. <laughs> oh, you gotta have a government. Yeah, I know. I know. You gotta have a government. Right. Because that's the way it's always been. <laughs> really? Or, or the or the, uh, or the the Hansel argument. Without government, the warlords would take over. And he'd say, well, what? what, what the do U.S. You is the biggest warlord right, of the right. goddamn fucking planet, right. bitch. The, the, the war, you the don't government, know that, you dumb fuck. The governments are the warlords. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, what do we need five minutes on there? Five minutes. Benny, your five minutes is never five minutes. I'm just saying. Uh, well, which I, I'm fine with that. But don't say five minutes and then take. Twenty. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm just you, giving you shit. No, if you want twenty minutes, you can call in any time. <laughs> if you want twenty minutes, take twenty minutes, but uh, not until after we do this first set, at least. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just got to uh, do shit. Yeah, I know. Vinny's Vinny's an easy. You know he is. Vinny, and he's Vinny, a good shit. He Vinny. takes it with you know in stride. Yes. So. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll we'll, get, we'll be back. I will look up the. You know, I brought it up because I saw an article, but yeah, of course I didn't bookmark it. Why would I do that? All right. Well, look in your uh, history or something. I don't know. Anyway, this is uh, Jethro Tull.
All right, very nice, very nice. Uh, that was a Miss Kate request there. Brittany Howard, uh, she's from uh, the Alabama Shakes, doing a song called Stay High. And we kicked it out. Before that, we had uh, We Can't Make It Here Anymore, James McMurtry, musical request there on uh, that one. And it's an excellent tune, and uh, it says so much. It says so much, and it's all true. Uh, and we kicked it off there with Jethro Tull, too old to rock and roll, too young to die, or as it gets to at the end, you're never too old to rock and roll if you're too young to die. <laughs> yeah, that McMurtry song is, is timeless, absolutely. Uh, and uh, it's still, you know, it, timeless. It's just as true now as when it was first written. So, eh, anyway, Booster, are you there? Moose Girl. Checking, checking, test, test, Moose Girl. Yes, I'm here. All right, there she is. <laughs> yes, I am here. All right. <laughs> so. So yeah. So yeah. yeah. Right. Um. Hang on a second. I'm gonna change over to headset. Uh, uh, oh, oh, what were you on? Oh. I was just on the speaker. I I change the speaker when the songs are playing. Oh, 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 okay, I see. I see what and you're then saying. I put back on that. Oh, that's the extra wide. Anyway, this is one thing that I found. Okay. Four things you need to know about Trump's attack on national parks and monuments. Alrighty then. President Trump is expected. Oh, this is. I'm going to tell you. The, this is from 2017. April 25th, 2017. President Donald Trump is expected to sign an executive order Wednesday that moves to undermine one of the nation's most important tools for protecting national parks and public lands. The order will direct the Department of the Interior, which oversee much of the United States public lands, to review previous monument designation, designations and suggest legislative changes or modifications, a White House official told E&E &E News. This move could open the door to provoking designations for millions of acres of land and waters that have, protected, have been protected under the Antiquities Act. Um, so this wasn't an Obama thing. Right. Every indication is that the administration's review will conclude that there's too much protected land in the country. The Republican Party platform called for turning over public lands to states as, and as a candidate, Donald Trump repeatedly said that we need to drill and dig more fossil fuels from U.S. lands. <sighs> But many people don't even know what the Antiquities Act does. Here's what you need to know. The Antiquities Act brought us the Grand Canyon, Acadia, and the Grand Teton National Parks. The Antiquities Act promotes symbols of our diverse history, including the only, only monument to LGBT rights. Uh, the public overwhelming attacks opposes attacks on parks and public lands. Of course they do. Eliminating or shrinking national monuments for who hurt local economies. And there you go. Yeah, and, I don't know how much of that I buy, but whatever. Right, and here's this other one. <clears throat> this is from May 3rd, 2019. <coughs> A running list of how... Let me get first link that before I forget. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what is that? Okay, A running list of how President Trump is changing environmental policy. The Trump administration's tumultuous presidency has brought a flurry of changes both realized and anticipated to U.S. environmental policy. Many of the actions roll, actions roll back Obama-era policies that aim to curb climate change and limit environmental pollution, while others threaten to limit federal funding, funding for science and the environment. It's a lot to keep track of. So National Geographic will be maintaining an abbreviated timeline of the Trump administration's environmental actions and policy changes, as well as the reactions to them. We will up update this article as news develops. Okay. So I will link that here. There you go. All right, a running so, list. So, may it march, for instance... March 29, 2019, <clears throat> Trump greenlights Keystone XL pipeline. Yeah. President Trump issued a new permit for the Keystone XL pipeline, which he had previ which had previously been approved two years ago after the Obama administration delayed it. 
The, the pipeline would carry crude oil from the tar sands of Western Canada to refine, refineries on the U.S. Gulf Coast. Okay, this is a huge problem, people. You don't want this shit going through your fucking states. No, you do not. No, it's... These people are fucking insane. All right? Yeah. And here's... The, oh, I did the National Geographic link. Okay, so that's cool. You can refer back to this, apparently, because they're kind of keeping track of all this shit that's taking place here. Um, What the fuck? All right, well, here, here's this, and let me just okay. say here's the pro when I have the problem from your article. Okay. Trump signs bill protecting millions of acres of public lands. Right. Which Who not, was that? They're not public lands. They're government-claimed stolen lands. Yes, correct. So it says uh, Trump signed a bill that provides protections to over 2 million acres of lands across the U.S., uh, the massive package was well received by environmental groups, hunting and angling groups, and lawmakers from both parties. Uh, the package touches nearly every state, designating 1.3 million new acres of wilderness lands across several western states, creating national monuments in Mississippi, Kentucky, and protecting hundreds of miles of rivers under the Wild and Scenic Rivers Program. And um, I, I think they just need, the government needs to leave their hands off of these things. They, this is this is not their land. Yeah. They they should have yeah. no say in this land. And uh, and uh, as we all know from what happened uh, up in Colorado, just north of New Mexico, shortly about two years ago, uh, the EPA went up there to check out some you know certain uh, gold mines that were going on, and they wound up polluting hundreds of miles of river. Uh, from from Colorado down in through New Mexico, and they said, "Meh, not a problem. We did it, so there's nobody we can really blame other than ourselves, and we're not going to blame ourselves. So we're going to say it's not a problem that we've that we've ruined all this land and all this water uh, for for all the people living that you know the, that use that water for their crops and uh, for yes. drink for drinking and right. uh, all the animals that wound up dead because of all of that." Yeah. It's it's not a problem because we the government did that and so who are we gonna blame? If it was some private party we could blame, we certainly would, and we would find them out of out of business. But no, no. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, Vinny Vinny said he's in the uh, he's in the what did he say he was in? I don't know. Oh, he's talking to himself. He's uh, ready when we are. Okay. All right. Well, let me just tell him I added him to the Freakers Ball. I added to the Freakers Ball group. Freakers Ball group. So, join call. There you go. Ball. All right. <laughs> Hopefully, he's paying attention, which... You never know. Vinny, Earth to Vinny. Earth to Vinny. Vincent Hillbilly. Vincent <laughs> Hillbilly from outer space. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, why is he calling? He is listening. No, no, not the RLM one group, the Freakers Ball group. The Freakers Ball one, dude. <laughs> Dork. The wrong one. Dork, not RLM. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's the technology's a new thing down there in Arkansas. Also, um, <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Let's see if I can get in here. Can I? Can I ping him? I don't know. Here, let me say here. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so I'll <laughs> figure it out, baby. Maybe not. No, he's trying to call on Vinny now. Stop that. Stop that. Vincent, call in the Freakers Ball group. Join the call in the Freakers Ball group. <laughs> God. Oh, man. i got to hang this one. Uh-oh. Did I hang up on you? I think I hung up. Hang, hang that up. Hang that up. I think I hung up on Moose Girl. Sorry, Moose. 
<laughs> I was clicking too many buttons. I was clicking too many hang-ups. Moose, you there? Oh, there she is. Hola. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. I'm like, what the hell? But but Vinny but Vinny should be here. I, 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 I'm not seeing him. Okay, Vin. Let's see here. Hello. I said add participants. I said Vinny. I put him in there. Oh, I, I didn't never I never clicked add. I don't know. Hello, Vin. Vincent. Vincent. Hey, Vinny. Hello, no, Billy. <laughs> that might wake him up. Maybe, maybe, maybe so. We'll see. We'll find out. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. He's, he's got. Are your five minutes is already up? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's there. I see him. I see him on the call. All right. I found it. There you go. All right, there he is. Buttons. Y'all can call me buttons, I guess. Buttons. Okay. Yeah. All right, buttons. Red buttons. Any buttons? We'll, we'll, buttons. we'll call you red buttons. All right. <laughs> Redneck buttons. Redneck. There, there, there you go. <laughs> So, so okay, Moose Girl. Yes, Vincent. This crazy business you'd be talking about about uh all the bad things that's happened to the animals. I've gotta tell you, girl. <sighs> it's all a lie, okay? It's not true. Well yeah, I know the government lies. I mean that's a no brainer. False front. So let's look at who who else but the Bundies. And the tortoise. You know what they said? You know what? caused all this to start was, well, this uh, 1970-something uh, act about, wait, Graham hears me talking, about the the cow, you know, was out there harming. Yeah, I heard about that story, but what That's I'm saying, lie. I wasn't it's talking lie. about the animals, though. What were you talking about? I was about? talking about the mining that they want to do yeah, well, in I the could... national parks and in the Boundary Waters canoe area, and it should not be allowed to happen. We'll see the problem. That affects the animals that live up there too. I get that. Yeah, the problem to start with about all that. Of course, the industry itself. You know, the mining and well, uh, yeah, the drilling and all that. You know, the fracking's bad. It's, it's well, yeah, it's bad. terrible. Fracking bad, very bad. Uh, but the, the and Grimner made good points, and I really didn't need to call in because he really covered it pretty good. Uh, and then, of course. What what do you've got? You've got both sides here, this extreme environmentalism, and then you got people like um, from uh, Lucas Oil, uh, big big interest over here, right. and others. I mean, I'm using them as an example that they are very closely tied in with this battle in the West, um, uh, protect the harvest, and and other groups. But it, it's fighting this extremes to both sides. Yes, but we don't. Like here, they stopped in this fracking before they got here and messed up my water well. Mm -hmm. But they've done it a lot here in Arkansas. So, yeah, this uh, fracking where they inject this stuff down in there into the wells. Yeah, I know how it's done. The shell and so forth. This stuff ain't good, of course. No. We want to see the alternatives to uh, um, this petrochemical industry. That's uh, well, what Grimner said it, makes sense. But it all that's every that can be every argument for every fucking problem we have that's based in the government because for one thing it should not have existed the way it does in the first yes that, that, that's the thing you can right sit there, there and it, but <laughs> but but that a, argument might be true yeah, nice. that argument might be true but guess what it is the way it is now so we can go back and say oh well it should never exist in the first place that's an easy cop out answer you know well, how it's the right it, answer. Whether you know, whether that's it, an easy no. cop out answer. Sure, government that we have right now shouldn't exist the way it is right now because it's fucking fucked up. You know what? I'm having I a get few, that. I'm but, having a few conversation that really t touches in on all this. Neil Wampler uh, was acquitted up in the Oregon standoff. He was down in Bunkerville. So we're talking about what's going on there now. Over on uh, Twitter, I'm talking with these folks over here about uh, Stuart Rhodes and you know the Oath Keepers. And yeah, he, I've met that well, dude. Yeah, and he was calling out, uh, you know, let's not go to the I think it's Proud Boys or Joey Gibson or whatever up there in Portland. Uh, anyways, I wanted to touch on that a little bit. Okay. Uh, uh, also, but what I want to say here is. Um, the Endangered Species Act is, is used by people like the Center for Bio Biological Diversity, uh, Sue and Settle. Uh, I think uh, Hal is going to be talking uh, Sunday, excuse me, about uh, some of this, more about this. And uh, 
When it comes down to it, it's all these rich fucking bastards that have companies or whatever and have positions of power that get to make all the decisions for everybody. And it's a small group of people compared to the rest of the fucking population. Yeah, they, they, you know, they, and they don't listen to what the people want. You, well, you guys need to realize this. We're not yeah. the only way to fucking take them down is to go to fucking goddamn all out war with them. No, that's and not very many people are equipped to do that or can do that. So that's not a realistic. Yeah, that, that's not a that's not a winning right? strategy. No, it's not. So and, what do we do? Listen, what do we people, do? People no. try and they try in vain and they throw themselves into the cogs of the machine and they're ground up, they're killed. Right. Or cynicum, or they're put in prison. Right. So how do you, how do we deal with this? How do we handle this? How do we change it? Got to be smart about it. And I'm going to tell you the best place to start is to get behind the woodshed and learn, learn the path. Yeah, I'm not fighting learn. them with their own game. That's no, no, no. not going to yeah. work. I don't have the resources for that. I don't have the no, money no. for that. This, this is no. This is what I'm talking about. Is it's not. Everybody thinks Hal is a legal. You have no. Please you have not. to have a lawyer. And not, lawyers aren't free. Hal, Hal all right? is, lawyers are not free. Well, okay, listen. Hal is not a legal guy, and he is not opening a can of whoop ass on your ass. He is teaching you how to avoid the path of the beast. beast. I know how to do that already. Yes. Well, okay, good. Then, then do you learn. You're talking about you want to fight. Well, then you got to learn how to not be taken down by that. So then it does, does uh, come to being able to hold law and legal accountable. <laughs> Sorry, they're their own game. Well, if they come You're trying to beat them do? at their own fucking game. Are, are you gonna... We need a new game. That's what I think. We need a new fucking game. Well, you can't just pick up your ball and go home because well, they'll kill you and they'll stomp you in the head and take right, your... Right. Right. So, how, again, how do we fucking deal with this? Not well, through the court system. Well, Give me another reason. Give me another example of a way gone, to deal with this. We've gone... We've gone from the tortoise to uh, picking hairs over here. Um, no, how do you deal with this well, but, without going through the court system? Well, that's, Is there anything that's you can gone. do without, besides going through their system we to beat them? Our scope. We're talking about the environmental uh, situation here, the mm -hmm. false front, right? And, and saying that right. here's a friend over here on Facebook saying, I'll die with my last heartbeat defending the poor little critters. And doesn't even know what he's talking about here. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and, I mean, you started out with one thing and you're going to the other because you, you're, you're first you're saying we need the environmental. It's all in, con, interconnected. We yeah. need to protect yeah. areas yeah. that are delicate to this planet. Or, and are told covered. the Boundary Waters Canoe Area should be left fucking alone. The oh, problem wow. I have with government is they can't fucking leave anything alone and they let these rich fuckers come in and just make fucking money off the shit and they leave this destruction behind. It, that's not right. Well, you know, the, not right. the, 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 the this monument that they created over there where Clive and Bunny ranches raises cattle, um, I think it was like, what, 60,000 something acres blue, or I don't know, it was a lot blue, uh, I mean, uh, um, <laughs> I forget what they called it now. It's all interconnected. Gold Butte, Gold Butte Monument, yes. And uh, right. so, listen, there's desert out here. Yeah. And I mean that you can walk for miles and miles and miles, and you're trans and your point? The same old vegetation out here. Your point? Yeah, I'm telling you that they say, we can't have cows out here stomping these bushes down and trampling the turtles. By God, we've got to get this man and his cattle off. Well, it's a lie, and they use the tortoise, the environment. I know that that's what they do. Well, why is it okay then? I mean, it's not well, okay. What about, it's what about not the, okay. What about the state okay. up here, the prairie chicken, or where they got up there, and they say, "Oh, the cattle are." Yeah, you know, they can they can invent a fucking goddamn new insect that they wanted to. Well, yeah, they where, do where, that. Where, even though they do that for all of us, where, they let where, the, where, the rich that, fucking uh, friends of Trump and friends of Obama. Do whatever the fuck they want because they have the fucking money or whatever the power. Where's the that spicy power. cricket at? I want I want to I want to save the spicy cricket. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying right. this well, is well, how they fucking do I, the American people or all the people in the world by saying, well, certain people can do this because they're special. It's like, no, you're not fucking special. You're special. You're not special. <laughs> no one's fucking special than another fucking human. All right? 
no matter how much fucking money you have, here, here. no matter if you're the president or if you're Moose Girl, you don't have any... Trump, yeah, he has power because he's been given power. Right? Are you he's been given that? power. Or is it rhetorical? Once you're in the presidency, you can do whatever the fuck you want, pretty much. You you realize, you know? of course, his son-in-law is his handler, just like that woman was... Uh, uh, Jeffrey's handler. Right. Uh, and yeah, and you are a special puppets. prince. Stop puppets. Listen, I know I've exceeded <laughs> the five minutes. I want to touch here <laughs> on a, a comment here. Uh, this comes from uh, Ryan Lentz. He's uh, okay. with the uh, uh, Hate Watch and the uh, um, you know the people that, that's keeping an eye on some of these uh, right hangers. <laughs> side that need no doubt need to be uh, uh, kept track of. But he, he wrote there that uh, about this guy, uh, Stuart Rhodes, Oath Keepers, and he says from the Bundy Ranch courtside, Arizona, where he once came to the defense blogger promising legal representation only to abandon her and uh, face dip, uh, dis, uh, dis, disciplinary measures from the Arizona bar. Uh, and that's on Ryan Lynch's uh, Twitter. So, uh, But that comes from Mark... Pick cabbage, and he's a real big guy into the. Uh, what? What's his name? Mark. Mark. Pick cabbage. Cabbage. Oh, okay. P i. Pick cabbage. A g. So he's talking about Stuart Rhodes and a long history of getting out uh, when the getting's good, and that's what I found with Stuart Rhodes out there. I, I saw the drones over the the uh, Bundy Ranch standoff, and people were like shh, 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 trying to shush me. Don't say nothing about it. And then no, no, no. And then Stuart Road, he he collects up and you know flees the scene. But I asked uh, on Ryan's uh, post there. I said, Ryan, have you heard about Rhodes giving money to the cop killers, the Millers? <laughs> well, you you laugh, but I so you don't know who they are. They they killed the cops in Las Vegas over uh, on the uh, Sunrise Mountainside. A lot. Good. No, it's not good. Yeah, Why's cops it? are fucking pigs. No, tell tell me why 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 did they kill the cops there? Well, they killed them. Throw the uh, one of the uh, "Don't Tread on Me" flags over them. They wanted to start a revolution, and but there's a lot more to this. So, uh, well, I, I mean, uh, were the cop were the were the cops like coming after them or doing something, or they went after the cops? Sitting eating pizza. Well, if they were just sitting there doing nothing, I, you know. But what did they do before that? You know, before well, they were I, eating pizza. I can tell you, my cousin's a cop over there. He's a detective now in Vegas, but he was, he did work that side. I, I don't think it would have went the same if they'd walked in and he'd been but, uh, sitting there. Uh, first of all, the the cop, the trainer, he had his back to the door, and the other guy, uh, the younger cop, uh, you know, he just didn't notice see it coming. So a lot of bad moves there. Uh, I, I think a lot of things have changed now. But anyways, so these millers, they got kicked out of the Bundy Ranch standoff, and Stuart Rhodes had given them some money, and I think they went and got a motel room in Mesquite before going to Vegas. But I, what I would like to know more of is um, their involvement with, uh, uh can't remember his name. He was running for sheriff, Martinez, Mark, Martinez or something like that. Um uh, and also, they were definitely had to have been on meth. Real, really had to have been. They were just plum crazy. And if you anybody knows about people on meth and how they go plum crazy, then you might understand. So, also may have been used as a little bla uh, what let's call it noggin fluid manipulation, a brainwashing. Yeah. I I think that there were these people were uh, manipulated into. Uh, to doing these murders but anyways uh it's no secret and a friend of mine thomas uh lockvar stewart he knows this story about Rhodes giving him money but ryan lance he's a big big time famous writer nice guy met him in uh in vegas at the trial and introduced myself to him and then i didn't know who he was i i had no idea who all these people were in mainstream but i got to know them i sure did and anyways i i hope Oh, uh, Ryan lent a, a cigarette, but he says, no worries, man, it's uh, on the house. But I told him, do you know about this? And he says, no, but we're in a uh, private conversation right here. I'm trying to put uh, my friend uh, Tom together to talk about this, and maybe we can find more. Uh, 
you know, things need to be known. And, and Leah Satilli with the, the second series uh, season of Bundyville. But, Vin, uh, you just, just get to the point because all you're doing yeah. is retelling a story. Well, I'm you're part not of telling it. The, getting to the point I just that you're not, trying to make. Yeah, you just story, get to your point. What are you trying to say here? I already told it. Did you? Did okay. You I did, but you're... You're, you're just, saying it's okay to kill cops, and I'm saying, saying no, it's not. We don't want nobody. I'm not saying for anyone to go out there and murder a fucking cop. Or civil war. We don't. What want I'm to saying cops. is, you have a, you should have the right to defend your fucking self against Ooh. a motherfucking Ooh. cop and know how to talk to a goddamn cop. Ooh, and I, of course, I don't, I don't advocate going out and killing policemen or Ooh. advocate that. They were murderers. Don't fucking sit there and say that I'm. I advocate for that because I don't. Well, there's an important piece of information I need to know here. Okay. You said they were sitting there at a restaurant eating some pizza. Mm-hmm. What, what what toppings were on that pizza? <laughs> I'll tell you. Grim. You're trying to be funny. I get it, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> the saying. toppings left on the pizza were not the ones they got when they ordered it. So, I mean, they were shot. Grades on the goddamn pizza. So, look at that. Then they went to Walmart to uh, uh, make their stand at Walmart for some reason, and uh, an armed carry person came up and uh, tried to stop the the husband, and she snuck up and shot him in the head. And then they uh, uh, had a shootout with the cops, and uh, they got wounded, I guess. And then she killed him. She killed her husband, then shot herself dead. Uh, is that the is that the answer for for change? That's I can give you examples of what not to do, and that's what I've been I've been trying to say. What how will tell I you. don't provoke cops. I know better than that. Well, we have cops. I don't give them a reason for them to pull me over. I fucking pay my get my license plate tabs. I tried that; that didn't. It failed miserably. I tried to protest that; it failed miserably. So I don't. I follow the traffic laws. I make sure my car has all the working things on it, like the lights. There's no headlights out. There's no brake lights out. There's no. That's how I avoid having to deal with them, motherfuckers. Because I know that they could fucking kill me and not even fucking think twice about it. So, that's how I feel about cops. Well, you know what? I, I always love is uh, when I'm part of uh, a police stop or interaction. You do? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, love it? I do. At the end, really? That's... You love that? You I... love dealing with them motherfuckers when they're fucking trying to pull, pin something on you like a speeding ticket or something. You know, I, shit. I have shit. To... I oh, have shit. To... No one loves it. No I one loves it. it. You're I crazy. It. You're I fucking love nuts it. to say that. No one loves there, yeah. having to deal with a goddamn <laughs> fucking cop. <laughs> no. No. What's up, I say. Yeah, I mean, he's looking at me. So, yeah, I love interacting with cops. I walk really? up. Really? So you should on. become a cop then. Listen I think to you me. need to become Slow a down. cop. I, I, you sound like you could be a really Slow good down, cop. Though. Listen. You sound like you could be a really good fucking cop, dude. Listen, you're hearing what you want to hear, and you're not hearing. No, I'm not hearing what I want to hear. I'm hearing what I heard. Stop a minute. You love dealing with policemen. You love dealing with them. Sure do. You know why? You You know why? I I find that hard. I have magic. I carry it with me. It's a yeah, uh huh. Yeah, you have fucking magic. No, you don't. You don't got no fucking magic. I do too. No, like what is it? Well, I suppose you can't like tell us because it's magic. It's It's a laminated piece of paper. Cool. What does it? What does it say? You're arguing with me. What does it say? There's real liberty media. I can read verbatim. That means jack shit to a fucking cop, dumbass. It works. It worked in the courtroom in Las Vegas. It did. Worked outside the courthouse with the state trooper. Worked with marshals. Yes, it's worked uh, amazingly. Yeah, it's magic. Press correspondent. It says it right that there. All rights expressly reserved at all times and not waived. Never, not ever. And it is for the identification and notification of intent. It's freaking magic, girl. It is. It's I, the magic. It's magic. I don't sit here and run It's not magic. magic. It's, not, it's just a laminated it's, piece of paper. It's not it's fucking magic. magic. It's a laminated goddamn piece of paper with words <laughs> on it. I can sing you a song. All right? It's not magic. YouTube. I can. I'll, I'll do it. I will pull some music out on you. I'll throw it with we'll a request, and I'll be a, ooh, all uh, in your ooh, face. Ah. Ooh, <laughs> ah. Yes, baby. Now, are you done fighting with me, girl? I'm not what? fighting. I'm just right, making come over here. Come over here. Give me some love. 
I am not fighting. All right, let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. (laughs) Wrap it up, boys, girls. All right, so all right, link is gonna have. It's going out being shared to several venues because, like I said, this is a combination of uh, two or three different uh, conversations going on all over. Now, I wanted to bring it in in about five minutes, and I knew... It's all interconnected, dude. you got to remember that. We could do it, girl. We did it. Yeah. Thanks. So much. I think yeah. it's time for more music. I'm not... Yeah, you you are right it's about that. More music. <laughs> <laughs> Call me gone. I'll be back in chat. Bye. Thanks, Hillbilly. Mm-hmm. All right, brother. Thanks, girl. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's all right, Rome. Rome's a fucking... I'm, Piece I'm of paper telling you, get it laminated. That's all you need to do. Of course, you have to go out and do at least one story. Right. You, you know. got to go out and do like a from the scene, or you know, go travel to a place. Well, no, you don't have to go down and. You can just cover once. You can do it on the air, on whatever you know, on YouTube or whatever. Right. Man, I, it's uh, yeah, I'm cool. Right. I'm cool with it. All right, here we go. Some all more right. music. The Dead South. All right, then. Nice. All right, that there was uh, Lindsay Lou in the Flat Bellies doing a song called Everything Changed, a Moose Girl request in the super wide format. All right, before that, we had Eric Clapton and a friend doing Call Me the Breeze. It was kind of a tribute there to J.J. Kale. Um, yeah, good stuff, you know. J.J. Uh, was, J. J. He, he, he was amazing. Um, yeah, was, and uh, so there was a lot of great people on on that particular thing there. Yeah, uh, very good video. Eric Clapton, Clapton, Knopfler, John Mayer, Willie Nelson, Tom Petty, Derek Trucks, Don White. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, and we kicked it off there with the Dead South doing in hell. I'll be in good company, which means I'll see all you there. <laughs> all y'all, I'll see y'all there. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if only Daily Mail picked it up, Prince, then that means that it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I mean, uh, this Russian plane. Oh, just hang on a second. Oh, it was flying over Ohio or somewhere? Yeah, it went over the Midwest or whatever. Yeah. So my thing is, okay, I'm I'm calling bullshit, okay? Yeah. There's no way, should or would this happen. No fucking way. Right. No. The flat bellies, not fat bellies. <laughs> <laughs> they might have fat bellies, but they call themselves the flat bellies. I don't know. It could be a play on words. I don't know. We we don't know. We don't know. No, we, don't. we don't. But anyway, um, a Russian Air Force jet has been spotted flying in the skies above the U.S. Midwest on what appears to be a surveillance mission of key strategic defense assets in the nation. I'm calling bullshit, people. You right. know, the, the, the U.S. government prides itself on protecting the country. Right? Yeah. So how in the fuck did this happen? If it did truly happen, how in the fuck did it? So we're uh, supposed to believe that. We're supposed to believe this. Even though we've been told continuously that the U.S. military is the greatest military on the planet, and we have protections in place to prevent these types of things from happening. Right. Right? I'm calling bullshit. That's the rumor. Did it make it off? And someone said it's only made it on the Daily Mail. Has anyone heard it on another site? Oh, so it's not on just Daily Mail. Okay. All right. (laughs) Good. Good. Uh, all right. So, so, I'm still calling bullshit on this story, though. I think it's another fear tactic. All right. Let's, let's it's say, like, oh, shit. Seven hours God, ago. The Russians um, are fucking flying over us. Oh, my God. Okay. But, uh, yeah, the the Yahoo uh, oh, oh, Daily Mail uh, from the Mail Online. All right. Da, da, da. Uh, yeah, usually uh, what happens is uh, one person reports them and... Everybody else grabs that report. Right. Um, right. I'm okay, saying, okay. Why, yeah. How can they... Yeah, they let it happen. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Let's, uh, is that, they, yeah. Let me just say, say, say this. 
Uh, as Ryan Brown, a Washington, D.C.-based reporter who specializes in defense issues, said on Twitter, the plane was treaty treaty certified. The, oh. ob the, observa the observation flight due to end today also had U.S. and Russian observers on board. Okay, well, that, that's more detail right. than that it's, they failed to mention. No, it's here, it's here in that article. I'm reading from that oh, article. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so, so it was, it's not okay, it's I not it's that. not the first time this year Russia has conducted such a mission. In okay. April, another plane from the Federation uh, reportedly flew over the U.S. nuclear laboratories. But the Daily Mail headline is and, Russian spy plane. And and, and and the U.S. has done its own surveillance missions over Russia. Right. In February, a specially okay. equipped Air Force jet. Uh, flew over Russian territory with U.S. and Russian crew on board. And they are spy planes. Um, but right, they're, because they're, they're doing surveillance, which is they basically spying. Yeah, yeah. But, but, they're, stretch, they're, but they're, they're known about spy planes. They, they, okay, these aren't so like, this, 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 bullsh this story should not have even been published. Well. Well, or the way it was. Like, they totally played it up like to be like, oh, my God, there's spy planes, Russian spy planes flying over the U.S. <laughs> be afraid, be afraid. Yeah, yeah. You All know, right. Like, All right. They, they, that's how they play on your emotions. They use those tactics to yeah. get your attention. Like, look at this shiny object right here, you know. All that's right. how they get, yeah, get people. All right. Well, here's here's a story from Russia today. Totally different topic altogether. Okay. Ooh, look at that. My highlights have been restored. Thank you, text marker. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is the deal. Who are they coming after? They're coming after me. You personally? No. And people okay. and and people like me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Modern medicine declares war on loneliness with drugs and bots threatening introverts with extinction. Hey, what now? Yeah. All right, the, ph the pharmaceutical and even robotic cures in the works for loneliness, a condition once considered part of the normal human emotional range, but now framed as a health risk, we are losing the ability to be alone at all. The pathologization of emotion has been on the march for decades, especially in the U.S., where fully one-sixth of the adult population takes antidepressant or other psychiatric drugs. Now the mental health industry has a new target, loneliness. It says that nearly half of all Americans polled last year by the health insurer Cigna said that they lacked meaningful relationships or companionship. A solution-based society might examine why so many people feel alienated from their peers despite the constant connectivity of smartphones and the Internet. A symptom-focused model, however, simply looks to stop them from feeling that way by any means necessary. Loneliness is worse than obesity, According, <laughs> according to a raft of studies that have been have been emerged, uh, that have emerged linking the emotion to increased risk of premature death, and even rivals smoking, and like obesity, big business for big pharma, gastric. I saw this something on this today. Yes. Uh, gastric oh. bypass surges and weight loss gurus. It requires medical intervention. Oh, baby, you can bet. Of course it does. There's a pill for that. Oh, yeah, yeah the, you know it. The, the University of Chicago's Brain Dynamics Laboratory recently began an eight-week trial of the hormone pregnolone, uh, rounding oh, up... The word. I, whatever. Uh, rounding up volunteers with off-the-chart scores on psychological loneliness scale based on animal studies suggesting that... Uh, the chemical can reduce an exaggerated threat uh, reactions that researchers say characterize loneliness. They hope to normalize the lonely persons, normalize, the uh, uh, self-centered hypervigilance that drives them to both desire human connection and deal poorly with it. 
Anyway, let me just jump down to the bottom here where I marked this up because all the rest of the stuff keeps talking about crazy crap like that. So there's this paragraph down here. It says, lonely or just alone? The pathologization of loneliness will inevitably elide the difference between being alone and being lonely as the mental health industry runs out of lonely people to treat with whatever therapeutic weapon wins the particular arms race and is forced to seek out more patients, loners, me, those dangerous types who actually enjoy solitude. <laughs> Dangerous, yes, we don't they're like... They're not dangerous, it's because they're a loner. <laughs> anyway, so these dangerous oh types God. that actually enjoy solitude are stigmatized as unpredictable weirdos who need to be brought into the fold. Uh, then it goes on to, the man who shot up the Walmart in El Paso earlier this month was an extreme loner, according to media reports. We would be... we. Would we be reading about it if he was an extreme extrovert? The myth of the introvert killer pops up every time, every time. even though it has been thoroughly debunked. Right, right, and, it's and, totally debunked. And they have a link there uh, yes. under on the word debunked to a Psychology Today <laughs> article and the introversion killer personality. With no anti-loneliness pill on the market, Yet, it is impossible to predict what's next for the... Oh, they just put you on those antidepressants that make you homicidal and suicidal. It's impossible yeah, to... Pre to help you. Pre yeah. It's impossible to predict uh, what's next for the creeping pathologization of the human emotional experience. But Amazon's Alexa has moved one step closer oh, to the companion robot model rolling out the medical feature earlier this year, which could conceivably oh be, de God, this is bad. be deployed to check on individuals at risk for loneliness. Uh, Alexa is going to, Alexa, how am I feeling today? Don't, don't try and figure out how you're feeling today. Ask Alexa how you're feeling today. <laughs> like I said, they're going to like really? I said, like I said, they're they're coming right after me. They want me. <laughs> I'm a prime suspect for them. Oh, of course you are. Good night, Vinny. <laughs> night, Vin. Thanks for calling in, buddy. Oh man, it's 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 the it's, the, it's one of the it's like if you don't like hanging around groups of moronic other people, then there's something wrong with you. You should want to sit around and 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 congregate in public places with people that you can't stand because otherwise you need these drugs and these drugs will yeah. make you make you want to go hang out people. with with a bunch of freaking morons it's a bunch of fucking bullshit <laughs> you know it's just like they got us coming and going and, and you got to really be on the lookout oh god let me see if this is you got to really question every fucking thing like Think about it logically in your own brain. Don't let someone else. Uh, think, they oh, fixed yeah, it. they fixed it. It's fine. <laughs> okay. It's fine. This, this next don't, article. This, don't fall for it. This next article, I, I, I saved it for one specific reason, and I, and I made sure to see because I figured that somebody would fix it before I got to it, and they did, um, because it was like really bizarre the way they had it worded. But this is uh, uh, Virgin Galactic unveils new digs at Spaceport America. So this is in Truth or, Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. And it says, on Thursday, Spaceport America design director Jeremy Brown gave KOAT, it's a Albuquerque news station, the first look at its gateway to space building. The site will be mission control for tourists to go into space. This, this next sentence is, is where they, when I first read this, and I read it, I was like, what? <laughs> anyway, it says, we terraced the space, uh, space so the furniture is all on different levels. But last night when I read it, when I first read it, it said, we terrorist the space. <laughs> they used the word terrorist instead of terrorist. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> you did what? <laughs> 
<laughs> so they fixed it. But it says we terraced the space that the furniture is on, so all the floors. Anyway, it's pretty. I don't really need to. I'm, I'm not really too interested in sharing it with you, uh, other than the fact that I, I just thought it was hilarious how, how they said they were going to terrorist the space station. <laughs> this, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, apparently they're still. I can't make this up. I know, I, I know, and it's like who's who's right? Who's it's spell? Really Who's checking, the, who's checking your articles here? But it, it is interesting, and it's good that they're still working on doing the space tourism kind of thing, Virgin Galactic, you know, um, or space terrorism. Space terrorism, I guess. That's so funny. We terrorist the space. I was like, ah! <laughs> what did you do there? <laughs> Oh, oh man. Okay, this is a good article. Good good okay. news article. Good news, bad news article. Good news, bad news. Okay. <laughs> and and I, I have questions even about the good news in it, but it seems like good news because it's not poison. But here it is. Mushroom-based pesticide could make chemical pesticides obsolete. So, hooray, right? Terrific. Sounds terrific. Uh, the non-toxic fungus-based insecticide kills over 200,000 pesky insects without harming bees. Great, great stuff. Uh, the all-natural mushroom-based insecticide could make bee-harming neo, neo, neo... I can never say that word. Neo... neo, neo <laughs> the, the nicotinides. <laughs> I don't know. Neonicotinides, I guess. And most other chemical pesticides obsolete. It's not toxic to humans, pollinators, fish, birds, or any other non-targeted animal. This is great news in light of the 700 species of American bees recently joining the endangered species list. The entire Gulf Coast is becoming a dead zone for sea life, and the bird population of Europe is free-falling to a third of what it was a few decades ago. Um, the only catch is... It has to be approved by the EPA. Mycologist Paul Stamets has developed the most disruptive technology the pesticide industry has ever witnessed simply by training mushrooms to sporulate later after they've been eaten by pesky insects. <laughs> he patented two insecticides in 2006, one for carpenter ants, uh, fire ants and termites, and another for 200,000 of other types of insects using special mushrooms he developed. Normally, mushroom spores repel insects, but Stamets, mush but Stamets mushrooms attract the insects to eat them before they sporulate, and then sporulate and sprout inside of them right through the insects' bodies. What? Killing them. Yeah, they got a picture here, like an ant. Don't with be messing with this. <laughs> they got a picture here of ant with an ant with uh, mushrooms growing out of it. Um... <laughs> Says uh, according to Stamets, uh, after insects eat the fungi, they become mummified, and the mushroom pops out of their head. Yeah, that is fucked up. <laughs> this is the most disruptive technology I've been told by executives of the pesticide industry that they have ever witnessed. Uh, St Stamets said in a <laughs> TED talk, "It could totally revamp the pesticide industry." But but here's here's my question and my possible problem, and I don't know. Uh, how much of a problem it would be. Um, you know, uh, one of uh, Monsanto's uh, pesticides works in a very similar manner. Where, uh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. The, the insects eat these things, and then it, it, yeah. it explodes their guts. Um, and this one works differently where it, it, it goes in there, and then the, the mushroom, let me put that up on the screen, uh, and the mushrooms pop out, out of their, uh, their, their, their body. Um, all right, I gotta, I gotta adjust this here. Um, well, where is it? Uh, window capture. There it is. Okay. Um, what's going on here? All right. You can see this. There it is. Can okay. I mute again? I don't know. What? No, you're there. Anyway, so there, so there's the ant with the, with the thing popping out of its body. Now, as the problem. <laughs> That's weird. That's yeah. weird. Anyway, so as as the problem the problem 
that I had with the, with the Monsanto, well, one of the main problems I had with Monsanto stuff is that stuff is still on the food after you're eating it, right? And so that stuff yeah. that was that was blowing up the insects inside no. also goes into your gut and does it. But right. now with this, I, I mean, those spores, if those spores are still on the... Uh, the, the product. Are they magic mushrooms or like are poisonous? No, no, they're I don't, uh, the, no, they're the specially designed right. mushrooms okay. to attract to attract the insects. And, so they're not good for our consumption. Well, it, no, it says they're they're, it's, it's, it, it says they're safe for humans. Um, I don't believe that. But it, see, they're not spraying this necessarily on the plants. Uh, maybe there's. Or, or or maybe they are. I don't know, but uh, somehow they're at attracting the insects to the mushrooms, so the the insects will eat the mushrooms rather than the plants, and then the mushrooms will blow up like that, or die like that, die in an evil manner such as that. So um, I, I I don't know. Yeah, you know, it, it's kind of it's a little bit disturbing to me as to whether or not you know. I mean, if those spores are still on on the on the insects. Uh, will will those do the same thing within your belly uh, once you eat them? <laughs> but it, it's probably still, even if it is that, it's probably still going to be better than what Monsanto has to offer. Right? Right. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> it seems like it anyway. All right. <laughs> Oh boy! So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, this story came out yesterday and made a big hubbub across the interwebs, and you all heard about it already. But I'm going to share it with you just so I can get it into the blog here, because really, really, Trump head. I like when Trump when Grimner says really. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The headline was yesterday. <laughs> Donald Trump reportedly wants to purchase Greenland from Denmark. Now, um, when, when the story first came out, it was just he wanted to buy Greenland, and I had to research and see who the hell owns uh, Greenland. And apparently Denmark owns Greenland. Uh, uh, Greenland is part of the, whatever, kingdom of Denmark. It's, it's owned by them. Uh, so it says, the U.S. president expressed interest in the icy territory, according to the Wall Street Journal, but the Danes have yet to weigh in. And I still don't know that I've seen the Danes weigh in, but Greenland did respond this morning, saying, go straight to hell. <laughs> Greenland's not for sale. <laughs> anyway, so any of you that didn't, hadn't heard about this whole uh, uh, Trump trying to buy Greenland yet, uh, and... And, of course, you know, we, there's no way it was going to happen. And he, he was trying to say, oh, it was a joke. Yeah, I didn't really mean I was going to try and buy Greenland. Yes, you did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so so you heard about this story, right? Yes. Yeah. The Greenland thing? Yeah, yeah. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> it's but, like, come on. Who the fuck do you think you are? It says, it says here, no, fucking God. Uh, Trump God. is fond of bragging about his conspicuous wealth and buying power, plastering his name all over buildings, and gilding the elevators of Trump Tower. But his latest reported aspiration is one on the extravagant side, even for him, to purchase Greenland from Denmark. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my fucking God. So, according to the Wall Street Journal... Trump had expressed interest in buying the expansive icy territory for the U.S. and has asked his aides to explore the possibility. He has even sought the view of White House counsel, though the journal noted his inquiries came with varying degrees of seriousness. So, anyway, uh, whether he was joking or not, he was probably serious. Uh, you know, throwing it out there as kind of a... Uh, a feeler, you know, to see if he could do it. But uh, like I said, I haven't. I don't think I've heard anything back from Denmark yet. But Greenland said, "No, no." Oh, I already pushed that link. Yeah, in. it's like fuck you, dude. You, you ain't buying on. I'm gonna buy this. I'm Trump, so I can buy whatever. I'm, it's I'm, like 
fucking shut the fuck up. I'm going to buy your country on, from buddy. you. You're, 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 you're <laughs> overstepping your goddamn shit, dude. Yeah. That's not a good thing to do. Don't step over your own shit. Do not. That's not a good thing to do, <laughs> in my opinion. Okay, I could be wrong. I'm not saying, you know, whatever works for you, works for you. But I'm just, as a suggestion, I would say don't step over your own shit. Yeah, yeah, Vinny, as it says right there in the article from Denmark. Denmark owns Greenland. Uh, Greenland Denmark is a... Does. Is a protectorate or what? It, it's owned by the kingdom it's like of it's Denmark. Island. It's considered an island, but it's fucking huge. So my, 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 and my next question, well, then who the hell owns Denmark? But apparently Denmark is sovereign. It's a monarchy. No, no, D uh, D Denmark is sovereign. But they still have a parliament and shit like that. Yeah, but but you can't, I mean, there was no, there, there would, it would be like, you can't buy Denmark. There's being that right, they're sovereign. Right, right. It's not for sale. But But Denmark does own Greenland, so they could sell Greenland. If they wanted to. Well, yeah, if they wanted to, right. which is Which prop. I don't think they're going to sell it to goddamn Donald Trump. Either either way, uh, either, either way, Greenland said go to hell, so. Um. Look for Greenland. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I like hey. the color green. <clears throat> sure. I do. Even though and it's you all. Know what? You know what Trump would do to Greenland? He'd make it black. Oh, yeah. He'd, 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 you know, like, he'd destroy the whole thing and he'd, they'd have to call it like. Black land, not like race. I'm not. Ta I'm talking the color. Right. He'd find a way to destroy it. Anyway, you know we're we're gonna play some this more like, music. Fuck you! You're not destroying Greenland. No, it's, it's yeah. a big ice sheet. Yeah. Greenland's a big ice sheet. You are, right. Who the hell do you think you are anyway? Yeah, it's just a big big sheet of ice. That's all. Right. Anyway, right. we're playing more music here. Okay. This is a guy you may have heard of before. His name is Joe Bonamassa. Oh, yeah. I've heard Joe with Muddy before. Water. You fucking know it. Ah, yes, ah, yes. Very nice, very nice. Right there for you all. Government Mule with Grace Potter. Although I'm not sure it was actually all of Government Mule, but it was certainly at least Warren and Grace Potter uh, doing Gold Dust a Woman back in 2013 uh, for the Moose Girl. Uh, before that, we had Black Sabbath doing Paranoid in Belgium in 1970 with a very uh, young Mr. Ozzy Osbourne. Well, in the rest of the band, too. But, yeah. Anyway, we kicked it off with Joe Bonamassa doing Tiger in Your Tank from the concert DVD album Muddy Wolf at Red Rocks. Good stuff, yes and baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know it, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, some people in um in my various social media things yeah. are saying that fall is in the air. And fall. fall is in the air. I'm telling you, I have a sense of these things. Summer's getting to be done. What the hell is that? Oh, I'm just it. saying. It's late August or middle August. Yeah, what did I and do? I'm just saying, I can tell when this when the phenomenon happens, the leaves are already starting to fall. I took my dog on a walk today, and it's getting down to like the 60s at night here. So the leaves are starting to fall. The trees are starting to change over already. So my prediction is early winter. Keep your hands to yourself, Vinny. I, I, I know these things. I've I've lived in this climate for my whole life. And I can tell that this is the phenomenon that's occurring. We're going to have an early winter. Okay, well, it's um, we had a late summer start, so... We did, but up here, like, our winter was totally brutal last year. Like, that was one for the record books. Like, Eau Claire got the most snow ever in one winter last winter. And so my theory is, is that trend is still not done yet. And so, see, it was weird because last winter it started out slow, and then it went totally brutal. So I'm hoping that... If it gets colder earlier a little bit, that's okay. 
as long as it's not 30 below zero, you know, like November weather can be good. If it's like 20 degrees or 30 degrees in November, we're, we consider ourselves lucky. Okay? Right. And so, you know, we know that by December time, January, February, those are going to be the most three brutal months of our fucking lives, right? Sure. But we prepare. It's like we spend nine months of the year preparing. And the fall time is when you really start preparing because you're like, oh, my God, I got to get this shit out of the yard. I got to fucking do this. I got to do that. I got to fucking close all these windows. I got to, you know, because winter's coming. It's like an event. It's like the Game of Thrones. You know how they always say, winter's coming. I do not know it's that. A I've never, thing here. It's a never thing saw here. that show. Winter is coming every year. If you continue to live in this climate, Winter's coming. Well, it happens. That's the, way, that's the way it works. You have to prepare for these <laughs> such events. You know, you have to make sure you got good shovels. You got a working snowblower. You again, you know what I mean? Right. You got to have it down. Otherwise, you're, the winter's going to hit. You're going to be unprepared. You're going to be kicking yourself in the ass. Be like, motherfucking lazy fucker. <laughs> you're going to be to yourself saying, you goddamn dumbass. Yeah, yeah. But you'll say to yourself, you will, you know. Right. You, it, you, don't, you, you know you live here, you know what's coming, and sure. you don't prepare. Well, right, that's your right. fault. That's on you then. It's you know? on you. It's all it's on, on you. It's not Mother Nature's fault. It's on you. Right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of your business. Right. Or yeah. be stuck with your pants down when it's 30 below zero. Just you don't go, want that to happen. Just, just put on BTO and do some taking care and of business every day. Around your ankles when it's 30 below out. Right. I'm just saying. Take yeah. it from me. I know. She knows. Future. She lives up there in the great white I north. Do. I do. So, you know, and up here, it's kind of cool because up here they have, like, Midwest fashion shows. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like a stupid thing, but, like, people do it for charity, you know? Yeah. Like, once in a while. But it, what it is, it's, like, flannel shirts and fucking boots and winter hats and mittens and shit. Like, that stuff is fashion to us, like. We'll be like, ooh, those are nice mittens. Where'd you get those? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, up here in the Midwest, like, some of those cl winter clothing items are, like, envious. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it's not dorky to have hiking boots on. Okay. It isn't. Or winter boots. Great. Like, you can go out to a nightclub. You know, let's say you're going out in Green Bay or Milwaukee or something. Yeah. You're going into a club. You know, it's 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 not abnormal to wear your winter shit, your winter boots and stuff in there, and then once you get in there, you put on your dancing shoes, your high heels or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like that's how we work it, man. Like All we right. have it down to a science. You know? Cool. We're like, we can still look good even though it's fucking nasty. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, we we it, it's a it's a it's, you know you have, it's a learned <clears throat> thing. But you living in this climate, you learn these things just naturally. You know what I mean? Because it's called self-preservation. Because you really? can literally freeze to death. And uh, that's not a good way to go out, dude. Like, uh, I don't want to freeze to death. So that's why I heed my gut instinct and my knowledge. And I don't take it, I don't take it for granted, ever. Like, when you live up in the Midwest, especially, you learn that you don't fuck with Mother Nature. No. You no. do not. You fucking revere, revere her, her. Revere. And you fucking yeah. give thanks to her, like, every day. Like, thank you, Mother Nature, you know, <laughs> for not killing me by a tree falling on me or something, you know, yeah. or a flash flood or something. You know, you don't know. You right. just never know. Right, you know? right, right. You just never know. So always be, like, grateful to the Mother Earth. That is my motto. Yeah. Now I don't know and if you're I, paying. I don't know if you're paying attention to the chat there, but Vinny, Vinny says, "Say things to me, Moosey, a bedtime story." And what ta I try to do is ta clean up <laughs> or leave a place better be than 
when I leave than when I got there. So let's say I go up, to, like one time I went up to the Boundary Waters, or I went, no, it wasn't the Boundary Waters, it was Lake Cabotogama, uh -huh. which is half of it's in Canada and half, it's, half of it's in the United States. Right. And we, we go on some random rock that's out there, like in the middle of the lake or whatever. Yeah. And there's fucking garbage on the goddamn rock. Like a fucking plate, like a ceramic plate, like a plate from someone's kitchen, was like on the rock broken. I'm like, what the fuck is this doing here? You know, so I'm like, I pick it all up, you know. Yeah. So I like to leave places better than when I found them. You know what and I'm that's saying? Good. Like that's, if that's I can pick good. up garbage and make a difference, and even though it's a small little, but that could have saved like a bunch of fish or something. By me picking up that one plate. Sure, you never know. Could have saved a big fish or something, you know. Yeah, you never know. Because so, what goes around comes around. Like, I believe in that theory. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. And a lot of people don't, but by, this can go really deep, but basically our education, the, the public education quote-unquote system, is bullshit. Because they don't, they teach you some of the good stuff, like, yeah, you got to know how to read, and you got to know how to add figures, and you got to know how to do basic things, right? Right. But you also need to know how to take care of your fucking planet. The thing that sustains you, you know? Yeah, We're all just people. don't, you know. We can't be poisoning the planet and expecting it not to affect us, human beings. It's fucking common goddamn sense, dude. You you would think. <laughs> you would think. But, yet, this is why we're still here with this fossil fuel issue. Is because them goddamn people that are have the money, the oil industry, dude, they're, one of the, they're almost as bad as the military-industrial complex, I'm going to say. Because, and they don't, they they try to blame the oil usage or shortage or whatever on the, the the general population. Guess what? The military is the biggest users of the goddamn oil. So if you guys can't see the connection, I don't know what to say. You know, like put put two and two together. You know, it's not rocket science. People are like, oh, it's too complicated for me to understand. No. You just mean that you don't want to take the time to figure the shit fucking out. Right. You know, you want to fucking just go through your life, whatever, la di da Well, if you want to do that, then you should not have had kids if you did. Because if you don't give a fuck about the planet and the way it's going to be 20, 30 years from now, then why did you have children? Do you not give a fuck about your kid? Or your kids? If you well, do well, give a fuck about your fucking kids, then you better give a fuck about what is happening to the goddamn planet. Well, well, Moose Girl, speaking yeah. speaking of kids, do you remember all those nineteen years ago when you yeah. when you had your baby boys? I do. Did you nineteen years ago? Did well, you, well, over nineteen now, but yes. Did you breastfeed them? I did for three weeks. Three weeks. But the problem was, Graham there, was I was a single parent. My mom left after being, she, my mom was there for three weeks helping me at, right after they were born, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. Well, then she left, and I had two babies. Two. Well, two you babies. Got two babies, two boobies. Yeah, but you have to have help le when one latches onto you. Then on the one side, then you lose the use of that arm on that side. So then you have to try to maneuver the other baby with one fucking arm to latch on to the other tit, right? Yeah. So that wasn't happening. Okay. Not being a single parent, so, not having any so, help. So right? then after those three weeks, you started using formula, right? I did. Was it prescription formula? No, it was not. I didn't, I didn't even heard of prescription formula Just before. over the counter, looking for formula. Okay, well, here's this thing. Prescription infant formulas found to be, oh, con found to be contaminated with aluminum. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> it says the facts. Multiple brands of prescription infant formulas 
were found to contain high levels of aluminum. Uh, should, should we be questioning the quality of products that come from ph pharmaceutical production? Do we veer away from natural methods of raising children more yes, than we should? we should be questioning. We should always be questioning every fucking thing. Okay, it says here, uh, you may not think aluminum is a big deal, but it is. For anybody who has looked into aluminum toxicology, it's quite clear and apparent that it has no place inside of any living biological organism. Putting it simply, if we it wreaks havoc on our biology. High amounts of aluminum have been found in the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease. With no shit, Sherlock. With experts in the field believing that aluminum brain accumulation may be one of the main causes of Alzheimer's. And guess where else it is? Where guess where else it's very prevalent, Grim? Uh, what other product? Everywhere. I don't know. It's in your cooking pan. Antidepressant. Antidepressant. Anti they fucking got aluminum in most of that antidepressant and that fucking um, what do they call it? deodorant? Yeah. So I use aluminum-free deodorant because basically if you're using the, the ones with aluminum, you're putting it right on your goddamn glands. Right. And it's soaking into your body. You might as well fucking just write yourself a goddamn death certificate right now. Okay. You're going to put that fucking goddamn aluminum on your fucking armpits. Exactly, which goes right in, right, right in the, right into your bloodstream from there. Right. It goes right into your bloodstream if you put use aluminum deodorant or antiperspirant. It goes right into your bloodstream. It's not a good spot to put that shit. So I always make sure if I put anything there, it is fucking aluminum free. Okay. It also says uh, aluminum's also been discovered in the brains of MS patients, and some of the highest aluminum content ever recorded in brain tissue was also discovered in people with autism. Uh, aluminum, that. aluminum is associated with several diseases. But an, an adult body can do a great job of flushing out aluminum. Uh, it can, but it, you have to be very, very healthy and make sure you're drinking plenty of water every day. And, you know, you even have to do chelation therapy to fucking get them heavy metals out of your system. Right. It says, uh, despite the fact that aluminum has no place within Earth's biota, I'm not sure what that word means, it's still present in many of our medications, our food, and even in our water that we drink due to contamination since the Industrial Revolution. Aluminum inside the body is a new phenomenon and still understudied. Again, there is a threshold in aluminum that is injected via vaccines doesn't exit the body. There is strong evidence that it remains inside the body and ends up in distant organs and eventually inside of your brain. Uh, you want to access more studies on that topic, and they got a link here for that. Um, a new study published by the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health has shown that multiple popular infant prescriptions are contaminated with aluminum. You may be asking... Yes. You may be asking how much aluminum, but the authors <laughs> make it a point to stress there is no safe amount of aluminum exactly. that, that can be inside of a human Thank body. You. Thank you, author, for saying that. Let, there is let, alone, let alone a newborn baby. Uh, that right. being said, amounts, are found, uh, amounts found are listed within the abstract of the study. Uh, another very important point uh, made by the authors, human exposure to aluminum is a serious health concern. Aluminum exposure in infants is understandably a burgeoning issue. While infant exposure to aluminum continues to be documented, its consequences, immediate and in the future, have received only scant attention, and, is, and research course. is required. They don't want you to know this stuff, people. They want you to think it's okay to put heavy metals into your body. They want you to think it's okay. Okay, so. and, and they tell you that uh, the, the thing they're telling you is that uh, breastfeeding, you know, is, you're better off using the formula than you are breastfeeding, which is absolute freaking nonsense. Um, yes, very much so. Uh, and especially, and then they put these poisons in it. Anyway, to give, give you a bit of information here on detoxing, uh, there's a lot of information on how a person can detox from aluminum and right. other... Yes, chelation therapy. And, and other them. heavy metals. Multiple yes, studies study. based, based on uh, what this guy's looked at or a girl, uh, into water with high amounts of silica are effective 
and draining. So I, Grim, I think that I dodged a bullet a little bit by having them 19 years ago. Yeah, probably. I think it was a little bit be- just right on the the border of this all this shit. You know what I mean? Right, right. We're talking. This goes back 19 years ago. In 19 years. This has been ramped up to the nth degree. All this craziness, this vaccinations, and all this shit. All right, well, here's the thing. Here It says uh, herbs like cilantro and substances like chlorella and spirulina. is very good for you. Chlo- yes. Chlorella and spirulina are also yes, great for spirulina. removing some metals. Um, yes, green, spinach, kale, um, all of those are very good at cleaning out your system. All right. Yeah. So anyway, here's here's the link for that. Um, you guys, Is can... it, you know what, guys? I mean, I know like some of us are older in here, <laughs> per se. But if you remember this, and I've said this before, if you want to know something, you can just type it into your search, whatever search engine you're using, and hit enter. And all this shit will come up. So if you guys are looking into something, learning about anything, you know, how to fix your car, how to fucking, you know, what what foods are good for cleaning metals out of your system, type it into a Google search box or Google or whatever search engine you're using and do some fucking research, you know, I mean, don't just rely on CNN and Fox and blah, blah, blah for your information. Because that information is not going to be correct. Right. It's going to be slanted or skewed in some way. So all you people, you know, when people ask stupid questions, sometimes I'm like, look it the fuck up. You know, don't do the research on your own. Don't ask other people to make decisions for you. You know? Yeah. Don't go, oh, well, what do you know about this? Well, what do you know you about know? this, Moose? <laughs> uh, 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 you know, and it's it, like, look at the fuck up for yourself and do your own fucking research and come to your own goddamn conclusion. Hey, circling. Don't be relying on people to fucking give you your fucking research. You know? No, you're going to do some work, lazy ass. <laughs> All right. You can't be a lazy ass. You gotta be like, if you want to know about something, you better be looking at it the fuck up and doing your own fucking research. Well, You're here. relying on people to do it for you in some chat room. Okay. Well, you can research this topic, Moose. All right. Okay. And it's from one of those clap outlets, The Guardian. All right. It's raining plastic. Microscopic, I that. microscopic I fa- fibers fall from the sky in yep. Rocky Mountains. Uh, it says, discoveries raise new questions about the amount of plastic waste permeating the air, water, and soil virtually everywhere on Earth. Plastic was the furthest thing from Gregory Weatherby's mind when he began analyzing rainwater samples collected from the Rocky Mountains. I guess I expected to see the See, mostly soil and mineral particles, said the U.S. Geological Survey researcher. Instead, he found multicolored microscopic plastic fibers. The discovery, published in a recent study uh, titled It's Raining Plastic, raises new questions about the amount of plastic waste permeating the air, water, and soil. Uh, I think the most important result that we can share with the American public is that there's more plastic out there than meets the eye. It's in the rain. It's in the snow. It's part of our environment. It's everywhere. It's every fucking where. (laughs) Yes. So rainwater samples collected across Colorado and analyzed under a microscope contained a rainbow of plastic fibers, as well as beads and shards. The findings shocked Weatherby, who had been collecting the samples in order to study nitrogen pollution. my, My results are... Purely accidental, he said, uh, though they are consistent with another recent study that found microplastics in the Pyrenees. It's everywhere. Because plastic doesn't biodegrade. It just breaks down to smaller and smaller pieces and particles. And it floats into the air. It's so small that it becomes airborne 
and it's basically it's all over their fucking place, every fucking where. So, it's uh, everywhere. Yeah, so it says this suggests that uh, plastic particles could travel with the wind for hundreds, yes. if not thousands like of kilometers. Said, it doesn't biodegrade, it just fucking breaks into smaller and smaller pieces. That's what plastic does. Anyway, you can read the rest for yourself there, but uh, I, and and I've 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 kind of known this for a long time because a lot of the snow is really weird. It comes down, it's like not really snow. Right. It, <laughs> it, it, it you know it's it, it's weird. Yeah, I hear you, Graham. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, but that's why you have to do things like I am going to one of my goals hopefully, is to build a portable sauna for myself. Cool. And my friends. Cool. Whoever wants to be in my sauna can be in my sauna. Nice, very nice. And a friend of mine has a perfect stove for the sauna. It's like an, it's an antique thing. Yeah, great. But it's still good. Yeah, like a Ben, ben Franklin type size. thing. I'm like, that's mine. I saw that thing, I'm like... That, if you don't sell that thing, that's fucking mine, dude. I mean, I'll pay him for it, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it'd be perfect for my mobile sauna that I want to build, like my cousin has. But anyway, um, uh, talking about plastic, this ties into it. Uh-huh. And I was just talking about the picking up of the, of the litter and leaving a place better than, better than you found than it. I, yeah, better than I found it, right. And this is, um, here, here we go. Let me just paste it here. So, this is, this I know this. Are you one of the weirdos who picks up litter? I'm like, yes, I am one of the weirdos that picks up litter. Okay, <laughs> so another story. So I'll, I'll make it short. I was in Puerto Rico on vacation with my family, you know. Supposed to be on vacation, having a good time. Went to the beach, right? Mm-hmm. Well, to the beach right in front of our hotel. And I was literally disgusted. Literally. <laughs> literally. Yeah. No pun intended. Actually, pun intended. And I see all these goddamn plastic drink cups all over the goddamn beach. Yeah. And there's garbage cans all over the beach. Like, not all over, but space periodically. There's garbage cans, right? Right. But all these other fucking people picked up their shit and left all their plastic glasses. Right. And I'm like, you fucking motherfuckers. I'm like, what the fuck? Just because you're on vacation, you think you don't have to pick up after yourself. There's no maids on the beach, right? No, no. You just because they're on vacation doesn't mean you can fucking just litter and be a fucking dick or an asshole, right? Right. And so I fucking go around and start picking up all these glasses. And, you know, they stack into each other, right? Sure. I seriously had, like, a fucking eight-foot stack of goddamn fucking plastic. I mean, eight feet grim. They got yeah. how many glasses that was. I don't it know, was 30, probably, 40. like, 300 or 200 glasses. I don't know. Okay. But my family, people were like, why are you doing this? I'm like, because someone has to. I'm like, there's no maids out here. These goddamn fucking lazy Americans come down here and think they can just litter on the beach? They do. It's like, what the fuck's wrong with them? And I was talking loudly because I wanted people around me to fucking hear me. I'm like, you motherfucking lazy fucks. You know? Well, tell me, tell me this. You ever seen pictures of, like, a park or other gathering area yes. af after an Earth Day celebration? Yeah. Yeah, sure. it's, it's like a fucking total trash right. yard. It's like you're, you're, and it's like, you're fucking you're, defeating the purpose, people. You're, you're out there for Earth Day, and this is and what you do. And you're trying to prove a point. Like, <laughs> yeah, the Earth. Take care of the Earth, but you leave all this litter behind? Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're yeah, I know. It's disgusting. You're, you're bullshit. You're not really for the cause. You just want to go to the Earth Day celebration. Right. You, you, you don't... You're not... Legit, you're not genuine. You're fucking fake. You know, all these people. I love the planet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I yeah. got some questions for you. But don't make me pick up after myself. That's just right. wrong. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Oh God. Yeah, you know it's so fucked up. I know. So hey, let's play some more music right. here. All right, let's do that. 
We will do that. And we'll be back. This is one of my buddies. One, oh, one of my good buddies. Goes by the name of George. George? What do you say we bust up this joint? Well, well, well. <laughs> Doyle Bramhall, too, and Gary Clark Jr. doing In My Time of Dying. Before that, Stevie Ray Vaughn from Escape There. The house is rocking. And we kicked it off with George Thorogood, Albert Collins, covering Madison Blues back in 1984. I'm telling you, that's some heavy duty. So who did the Madison Blues when it made the top 40? Was that Thorogood? Probably, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was, I think. Anyway, so that, that's that's some heavy-duty rock and blues set right there, boy. That was. That was all good, good rock and blues, man. I oh, just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, dig it, dig it. I dig it. I like that term, too. Yeah. Like, did I say, like, terms from the 70s or whatever? Sure. The boys are like, what? What did you just say, Mom? I'm like, I dig it. <laughs> like, no one says it anymore. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. It was cool, and I fucking learned it. So it's still cool to me. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. You know, like, no one says it anymore, Mom. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> 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 they just try to give me shit at it whenever they can, you know. Right, right. Well, you it's, know. It goes with the, you know, the parenting thing. Ooh, that's a long one. So, you know. Fine. All right, we can't do that one. We'll save that for next week. All right. Uh, so. Yeah, so. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I was saying to Prince here in the chat room, he's like, uh, it's funny how close to reality it is really, like all this crazy shit. And I'm like, we say that every week. Like, you can't make this shit up. And or to something to the extent that truth is stranger than fiction, right? Right. I truly believe that. I mean, it's just not how the world is right now. Sure. But I'm glad that I was born in the era that I was born. Like I'm kind of a flower child. Yeah. And I was born in the '60s. And my mom even said that I'm like her flower child. Sure you are. Like I took that as a compliment. <laughs> like she was probably thinking, Oh, she might not think that's good But I'm like, No, that's a good thing, Mom <laughs> So, um I am from the Earth Army and if you have not heard of that, I feel sorry for you. Right. But if you were a lover of the earth then you are a member of the Earth Army. If you take care of the Earth, if you help, if you clean up litter when you are in a beautiful spot on the Earth, you see this litter and you clean it up. That means you're part of the Earth Army. Yes. So you should feel glad about yourself and happy for yourself. And then you're doing a good thing. <laughs> and pat yourself on the back. Because no one else is going to. Well, there, some of your friends probably will, but... Everyone else would be like, oh, I wouldn't have done that. You know, I'm lazy ass American. I'm lazy ass fucking human. You know, it doesn't have to be American, you know. Okay, well, I have a couple of quick uh, space right. based, uh, pseudo space based stories. <laughs> All right. Here's, neither one's really space based. First one is on loudwire.com. Area 51 raid inspired fast alien stock. Sounds like a mess already. <laughs> yes, it does. It says, can you combine two events that are never going to happen into a <laughs> festival that might actually occur? Uh, harnessing the disorganized energy of both the torpedoed Woodstock 50 festival and the farcical Area 51 raid promoted on Facebook last month, organizers have announced the inaugural Alien Stock Fest. It's set to take place in Rachel, Nevada, the ufology-entrenched area 
adjacent to the U.S. Air Force secret of Nevada Test and Training Range, which itself contains the storied Groom Lake installation, Area 51. Uh, next month, the 19th through the 22nd of September, although participating artists and vendors have yet to be announced, you didn't get much time, boys, the event is currently raising operational funds while touting itself as a party in the desert, along with camping, music, art, installations, and some surprise performances. Uh, anyway, they got links here to the, the uh, Alien uh, Stock uh, uh, Festival, I guess, whatever, Storm Area 51, they can't stop us all, da da da, anyway, and they got some cool graphics made for it, so uh, yeah, get on down there to Alien Stock and have a good old time out there in the desert. And then this one came out today um, <laughs> from, <laughs> it's on Russia today. It's, uh, 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 I'll just give it to you. Nuke Mars. <laughs> Elon Musk sets Twitter on fire with interplanetary declaration of war. <laughs> uh, serial entrepreneur and part-time meme enthusiast Elon Musk has once again whipped the internet uh, commentariat into a frenzy, this time with a simple two-word proposition on Twitter. Nuke Mars! The idea isn't necessarily new. Musk, Musk has discussed using thermonuclear weapons to nuke the red planet's poles to assist in terraforming the planet for future human colonization for years. But never one to miss an opportunity to stir the pot Musk took to Twitter on today to gauge support. Predictably, many answered Musk's call to arms with memes and good-natured mockery. Well, that escalated quickly, but I support your decision, Lord Elon. Nuke it! <laughs> and they got pictures of a, a guy shooting, uh, shooting Mars with a gun, says Elon. Uh, then they got that one, you know, where he, the guy's walking with his girlfriend and he turns around to look at the girl in red. Except uh, the the guy has got Elon Musk's head, his girlfriend has Earth's head, and, and the girl in red has Mars' head. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, just too comical. Anyway, that's that's all the time we got. We got to do our last set here. Yes, we do. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks, yeah. everybody. And we'll be back to say our goodbyes is. or whatever, but enjoy the music, and thanks for tuning in. You guys are awesome. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Every single one of you. Yep. So, uh, it, uh, rip, Pete. Hey, raw right, Pete, Peter Fonda. I I really yeah. love that movie, Easy Rider, and I, I've watched all your other movies, and i read your book, and dude, rock on, brother. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's really uh, the first time I've ever heard anything done in Pace Studios that sounded good. And uh, Larkin Poe doing, doing a version there of Black Betty. Great that's stuff. Awesome. Dig those gals. Uh, anyway, before that, we had Easy Rider, the intro, the Born to be Wild, a little bit of the pusher there on that. And nice. uh, the first thing there was uh, Jack Nicholson, Dennis Hopper, and Peter Fonda. <laughs> Talking about freedom and then yeah. and then getting the shit shit beat out of him and yeah, so the nice freedom you got there, right? Yeah, well, you know that's how the rednecks deal. So I know, so, I know. Anyway, um, that's gonna wrap it up. Thanks to yeah. one and all listeners and yeah. participators Thank in you, the everyone. chat, song requesters, all that stuff. Yep. Um, tomorrow, Good job, people. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow you got the uh, dark table at noon. Uh, with yep. with Flash and whomever. Last week it was a four four person table, so uh, yeah. If you want to join in on Dark Table, just let Flash know and he'll he'll get right. you in there. Um, I'll be on Sunday at noon with the Blues and we play trivia here in the chat, followed by Hal Anthony at 3 p.m. Eastern with Behind the Woodshed, opening up the big old can of whoop ass. I'll be back. I'll be back again Monday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern. 
with Grim Leftovers. Check the schedule on reallibertymedia.com for all of the rest of the shows that come up throughout the week. Um, everybody have a great weekend. Yeah, have a kick-ass weekend. Everybody. Yeah, and uh, we'll talk to you all later. We will. Peace. Peace.